click, which is fine. I can adjust that. But I want to make sure that you can hear me that you hear no clicking or popping. Oh, Emil posts in the chat about the random number book. I wonder if I have that somewhere around. my audio folks. I'm going to get started in just a few minutes. I'm having some technical difficulties, so please bear with me. Uh, yeah, very quiet. Okay, thank you, Alka, for that message. I am turning up my audio a little bit higher. Uh, that should help a bit. I'm also going to turn the music Now, did you all know? You know what? I'm just going to mute myself. I'll be back in exactly two minutes when I'm ready. <laughs> wow, I did the timing. I've never gotten the timing of that right. You might think, first of all, hi, my name is Dan. This is The Coding Train. You might think that I have some really sophisticated system where the video plays, I'm just making sure, is our things working? Am I live? <laughs> uh, where the video plays and sound plays and they're timed together and I just press a button and I've got this like team of people in this room all like with headsets on and you know, three, two, one, no, none of that, none of that. It's like, you would not believe the amount of duct tape involved in getting that soundtrack to play. First of all, did you know that a watched tablet does not charge? <laughs> I have two tablets of unnamed uh, uh, company made, having made them. You probably can guess. One right here, you know, no, no uh, one right down over there, both plugged in for the last 30 minutes. Neither one seems to have come alive. One is meant for me to be able to read the chat as I interface with you through the medium of the internet and YouTube. And the other one is meant for me to press buttons on to play music and sound effects because apparently I'm trying to pretend that I have some kind of entertainment operation here on the internet. <laughs> but um, nothing is working for me. I just have this plug that goes to nowhere. I was like, let me just find that music track in my Google Drive, and I'll try to play it, and I'll try to press this button over here. Uh, so far, everyone in the chat seems to be, oh, you do hear the popping? It came back? <sighs> so I'm going to fix that in a moment, but let me explain what's going on and hope that maybe 
it's not happening. <laughs> and maybe that was just a mistake. But、um, I am using a particular piece of technology for for you to hear my voice,、uh, called Nvidia Broadcast. And、uh, as this is an artificially intelligently themed live stream, one of the features it has is a live echo reduction. And、um, yeah, you hear the popping. So for whatever reason, that echo reduction、um, seems to be causing a glitch. And I spent a very large amount of time debugging it and determined、uh, that this was just an issue I couldn't get around. But then. Beautifully, all these new drivers and updates came out, and I installed them all, and it went away. And apparently, it's back. So I think, huh, huh.、Uh, if all things fail, use a real train conductor whistle. Well, you'll be glad to know. Gambling addictions, everybody. <laughs> Just take it easy. I'm very sad. I'm a delicate flower. <clears throat> This is an authentic Danish train whistle from the 1950s. Thank you to Processing Community Day in Copenhagen, which I had the lovely opportunity to attend some number of years ago. Time has no meaning to me, and、uh, people are some people are saying, "Oh, I've only heard it pop." So you know what? I'm going to leave it until I hear a lot of complaining, <laughs> because that's basically that's how the world should work. You should put yourself out there, and then when enough people complain, you should adjust. What am I even talking about? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. <laughs> I hope that didn't hurt anybody wearing headphones. Welcome to the coding train. So today is a bit of an unusual stream. Not that there is any such thing as a usual stream. I would like to show you my computer machine, but I need to take a few minutes to close a few windows.、Um, And uh, um, just make sure、um, things are all right. You talk amongst yourself for a second here, and let's actually start with. I'm just gonna、uh, could barely hear the whistle. So hold on, let me check my settings. Uh, uh, no, no, certainly, if you were watching a professional operation here of somebody live streaming on the internet. They would have checked their audio settings before they hit the start streaming button, but that's not what you're watching. So just to set expectations, table set, if you will. I'm going to go check my audio settings right now. Talk amongst yourselves. I would play you a little background music, but I don't have an iPad. That's oh, I said it. I said it. I don't have a unnamed company-made tablet. Charged. Let me check the one on the floor. I have two going. I plugged them in a half an hour ago. It's very. There's no heat in this room unless I'm in here. Do you think that、uh, a computer machine being freezing in the cold does something like? Does that completely suck all the energy out of the battery? I mean, these are old. These are like you know, ancient、uh, tablet machines.、Um, I'm just going down here. I got one on the floor charging. Oh, still just got that little red bar. The bottom. I'm gonna go over and check my audio settings. Don't worry, I'm gonna do something. Uh, I, uh, let me just check the.、Uh, okay, Nvidia. I'll talk you through what I'm doing here. I wish I can't share screen on my streaming computer because I mean I could, but I'm not going to. Yeah.、Uh, Nvidia broadcast. Uh, Um, and oh, the noise removal is no. The noise removal is not on. Just the room echo removal is on, which is what it should be. And okay, crackling every now and then. Yeah, that's what I would have thought. Supercrafter says cold is usually better for computers. Means the heat they produce is dissipating quicker. But they're off. They're off. <laughs> they're sitting off. Okay.、Uh, all right. I'm gonna just as a experiment turn off. The、uh, echo removal, and you will realize that I uh, uh, am in a, a very large, empty garage studio <laughs> that has no sound treatment.、Uh, I do have a couple sound blankets that I sometimes have hung、uh, in the past, but it's kind of like it gets in the way. It's sort of a mess, so I gave up on that thought. Like,、uh, some algorithm will fix this for me. But guess what? Today is a day where there is a theme. Algorithms aren't going to fix it all for you. <laughs> all right, 
so let me know if you, uh, you, you can let me know in the chat. Oh, oh, I see, I see a lap, a, I, I see a tablet turning on <laughs> exactly 50 minutes from when I plugged it in at 9.30 a.m. Eastern. Uh, while that's uh, turning on, let's move over and talk about what's going to happen today. Um, sounds fine, nice reverb. That is the kindest thing Simon Fletcher says, sounds fine, nice reverb. That is like the kindest thing anybody could ever say to me. All right, so I'm over here by the whiteboard and uh, it's a little dark also, hmm, uh, something with the light, but I am going to make a list of what I'm going to do today. Uh, I did make that list and it's in the chat, pinned. I think it's also in the video description, but I didn't look at it recently, so I'm gonna make a new list and then we can compare. You let me know if I'm missing something. So the first thing, I think I'll probably start with um, the newest thing that's on the things that I do and work on, which is something called ShiftBot. So that will be uh, the through line for today. And what I also wanna do in today's live stream, it's not gonna be a major coding stream today. So I know some of you prefer, I don't know if anybody actually prefers the streams where I just kind of like waste time. But I know I do hear from people, I prefer you just to be coding the whole stream. Well, I understand that preference, but today's maybe not that day. But I do want to review um, challenge, challenges 178, which was the Wolfram CA, and 179, which was uh, sand falling. So one of my commitments to 2024 is more coding challenge videos. I did exactly three of them in 2023, which is very few because um, I otherwise had done, you know, I used to do them like two or three times a week. I don't know, I don't know how that ever happened. But um, uh, good news for you, challenge number 180 is in post-production. <laughs> that makes it sound so fancy. So that is coming soon. So maybe I can tease that for you a little bit. So I want to review, look at uh, a bunch of comments people made to those uh, videos, as well as look at the Passenger Showcase Project, which are things that you, the viewing community of the internet, has created uh, based on, well, I don't know if it's based on, but themed and related to the things in the video. Then, um, so ShiftBot will help us uh, with all of this. And then I also want to, oh, oh. I just want to mention uh, and shout out January. I have an apology to offer, which is to uh, uh, Raphael um, de Corville, and um, which is that I know that he, last year, both of us did a January speed run, and he, I forget what his time was, and then I beat his time, but it's not a competition. And I also said, I think, like, if anything, his was better because he put more thought and time into it. So, uh, and then he did another January speed run. If you're, uh, if you're not familiar, check out uh, Sable, Sable Raff at uh, Twitch, uh, Raphael de Corville, uh, weekly coding challenge, a lot of stuff. I'm sure some people who are moderators can put links into the chat. A uh, wonderful community of folks, the Burbs Nest, uh, if you will. We did a, a collaborative stream, uh, celebrate a decade of code with, the, with uh, P5JS. Um, but he did a speed run quite recently, and then at the end challenged me. I think he did 145 minutes. He did it uh, AI assisted, and I could, I would, I would like to do that. First of all, January's over, so kind of too late. I mean, it ended yet. Yeah. What's today? February 2nd. But anyway, it ended a couple days ago. But also, I've actually been doing January secretly on a different social media platform where no one pays attention to me. So I'll show you a little bit of some of the things that I did um, for January. And then I think, uh, Raphael, 2025, I'm coming for you. I, you heard it here first. Um, so, but yeah, so that's, I wanna talk about January. And then I wanna dig into a little bit more about, um, you know, making your own, I don't know what to say, like, um, uh, chatbots. How 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 do how does Sh I'll say how does Shiftbot work? So there is uh, Shiftbot is a collaboration with uh, Google Creative Lab. Um, there's a video about it. I'll, I'll point you toward that direction. There's an AI researcher, uh, Jasmine, who did um, you know a uh, it was a, it was a team effort of a lot of different people, but who is the AI researcher who um, wrote a, an incredible blog post describing all the technical components of it. And I might like to try to go through a few of those to the extent I have time. 
<laughs> I don't know how to change the time on this watch. Does somebody know it's a Casio calculator watch? I can't figure out how to change the time. I, I think actually it's more the problem that my eyesight does not allow me to see it properly and the buttons are too small because they got kind of old. Just to be able to, you know, <clears throat> how does ShiftBot work? And then, I don't know. Is that everything? That looks like a good agenda. What did I miss? Here I am over here. Uh, thank you, uh, Coding Garden. Everyone should uh, also check out Coding Garden on Twitch and YouTube. Um, and the sound has changed, but not in the best way. Do you, do you know how much pain it causes me that I cannot get my audio to work and be effective one of these days? Let's just see. Let me just see if I can get the chat open on here now. Um, give me a minute here. Talk, uh, let me see if the other iPad turned on. No. <laughs> Unbelievable. Okay, I just want to get the, um, I want to be able to see the chat here to the, to the best of my ability. Um, so just give me a minute here. Anybody let me know in, uh, oh, okay, let's see here. I'm seeing some messages in my Discord. Uh, uh, okay. Almost worth the pops. Yeah, I have, I forgot. I'm, uh, I'm getting lots of good advice about audio settings and OBS and I, I I, I actually really did a whole transformative thing with my audio and OPS. <laughs> and I did it, I did it in a different, I run multiple instances of OBS on the computer and I have a different one that I run for streaming and I didn't put any of the audio settings into that. So, ah, welcome, what? Uh, fine, fine. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, please, can I just go to my live stream to see the chat? This isn't even going to work. All right. Ah! <laughs> Wait, what happened to ShiftBot? Oh, there, there ShiftBot is. Okay, okay. The audio is tolerable for me, and that's all that matters. That is also a very kind message. The sound is perfect. All right, everybody. Um, isn't the coding challenge 170? Did I get the numbers wrong? 178, 179? Anyway, let's just get started. It's already 1025. This train has all sorts of mechanical issues. Uh, and I'm going to move right over here now. Okay, guess what, everybody? I am here to introduce you to. That was a very loud, oh, it's just a truck driving by. Uh, Shiftbot. Hi, Shiftbot. How are you? Hmm. I don't think Shiftbot can hear me. Shiftbot, you need to type to Shiftbot. But I, I, oh, oh my goodness. Calm down, everybody. It's going to be okay. <laughs> ah, so, Son of Samuel is giving me some advice about how to change my watch. Okay, so Shiftbot is... Um, an experimental chatbot. It is a Chrome extension that only works if you are on the P5.js uh, web editor. Um, and so you might be wondering, uh, how did this come to be? And how do you get access to ShiftBot? And then I'll, I'll, I'll demonstrate some of its features. So I believe if you go to, well, let's go to labs.google, google.labs, I can't remember. I think it's labs.google. Um, this is a website where you can watch me like laugh at something over and over thousands of times. Like, you just leave this desk, this page open on your computer. I just do the same expression over and over and over again. I guess eventually they'll come up with a new project and I'll get replaced, but I find it very funny that it's just that weird. You also get a really nice view of how I'm kind of going slightly bald, which uh, I thought, I, you know, you could see maybe I'm trying to hide that by wearing the hat today, but no, my thought was you might actually get confused because, uh, oh look, ShiftBot's having some uh, coffee. Um, you might get confused because both of us are gonna be on the stream and I thought if I wear a hat, it would be a little bit more clear who is who. Who is the AI version of me and who is the human version of me? I, I don't know if that's working for you, but I thought that could be helpful. 
All right, so um, this is a project that uh, researchers at Google uh, worked on. I was very uh, honored and uh, um, slightly terrified to be invited to participate in an experimental project. Um, and what we uh, were thinking about is what is possible in the realm of large language models. I mean, you're probably all, if you're paying attention <laughs> to the technology world that we live in, um, there are tools out there where you can say, hey, uh, uh, maybe, maybe in a more polite way, ex excuse me, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, uh, pardon me, would you please provide me some P5JS code to draw a flower? And then, bloop, there it is, copy, paste, draw a flower. Now, I think this is an interesting discussion to talk about, do we want to live in a world where that's possible? Uh, it's a little bit too, too, too late at this point, uh, uh, at least in terms of any agency that I feel I have over what world we're living in. But um, I do think, so I think that's, a, first of all, a fair question to ask. I think there's a lot of complicated questions around uh, thinking about all of the data that was collected um, in order to make that happen. Um, but what I, you know, given that space that we're living in, I'm kind of interested in what are ways that we can use that capability and that technology to provide, um, to bring a little, well, one is just to bring a little delight into your life, perhaps, and also to think about um, how um, you, you might have a little bit more agency over what is the, uh, an understanding over the source material and the information that you're getting in that context of chatting with, uh, you know, an AI uh, chatbot. So ShiftBot is an experiment in that direction. I think there's probably like a lot more things to say around the sort of goals and principles of it. If you're interested in giving it a try, you can go to uh, shift, shiftbotwithgoogle.com. Now I will say that this is, you know, due to the nature of this being highly experimental, um, it is built on top of the Gemini API, which is Google's large language model, uh, which is you know, fairly new as far as I understand. So Gemini itself it, 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 on some level is somewhat, I don't know about experimental, but is new. Um, access to the Gemini API, in fact, isn't available necessarily globally. This we're trying to, uh, working with them, do we want to get some testing, see how it's doing, <laughs> make sure it's actually something that helps people and doesn't like cause more problems. So there, if you want to use it, there is a waiting list. Um, uh, and uh, it is not available in all countries yet. Um, so, um, but, um, you know, stay tuned. Uh, uh, and if you get access and you are able to give it a try and have feedback, um, there's an email that you can write to. You can reach out to me on social media. The more feedback, uh, the sooner, and hopefully it can get opened up to more people. Um, okay, if you have, a, and Moonzir, thank you for your uh, membership. If you... <laughs> <laughs> if you uh, happen to have access to it, I'd let you know, feel free to let us know how it's been for you um, in the chat. <laughs> okay, so that's what this is. Now I'm not going to play this video here because it'll it'll be too embarrassing for me. But um, you can also watch this video, uh, uh, which has an interview with me. It features Lauren McCarthy from P5JS, some students from NYU, some of the researchers at Google, talking about the themes of the project and. Uh, its goals and how it works. But more importantly, what I would like to highlight here is this particular blog post. And this is what I'm really interested in. So if you followed some of my uh, earlier live streams, you know that I teach a, a class called uh, Programming from A to Z, which, you know, I, gotta, I think I just gotta rename this class. But programming from, the reason why I called it Programming from A to Z is this class, the first time I taught this class was in 2008. Like some kind of medieval computing. I don't know what we were using back then. I think it might have been paper. Perhaps like, th there's like a device, um, you know, you, you kind of you put ink in a tube and then you have this little like point at the bottom and it kind of slowly drips out. You can like smear it onto a paper, on a, onto a, um, you know, a, a celluloid uh, a thin slice. Anyway. Um, but, uh, so this class was always about different kinds of algorithms to work with text. Um, I have many videos on my channel around, you know, Markov chains, context-free grammars, all these types of things. And this was one of the first year I really dove into large language models. Um, you know, I, I encourage you, anybody who's interested to look at the syllabus. Um, it, there was a stream that I recently did around, um, embeddings. I was using a particular embeddings model. 
um, uh, to do uh, clustering of text. And so this is a lot of background material. A Gemini didn't exist, or it probably existed, but I had, was not aware of it or not using it yet uh, while I was teaching this class. So most of the models I used were, uh, used Llama quite a bit. We looked at um, OpenAI's model and then some on-device models that you can find uh, it, it, particularly on the Hugging Face website with the transformers.js package. So lots of possibilities there. Uh, probably, honestly, like this class I'm teaching again next fall. So oh, this summer, next fall, lots more content to come on the channel, hopefully about that. I'm focusing on the coding challenges and the nature of code stuff a bit more right now. But if you read this post, um, one of the things that you will discover is that this project involves both prompt engineering, which is a way of uh, kind of directing a chatbot, a pre-trained, an already trained model uh, to give it some tips and suggestions about how to behave and what style to adopt, um, as well as, um, you know, what I, uh, is it one few shot learning, which is kind of the idea of like, and also here's a few examples, uh, you know, maybe you could put in your prompt, like, by the way, there's uh, even if like the, the model might not have been trained with data on a recent version of P5. So you could put in your prompt. And by the way, the newest version of P5 is 1.9. And these are the new features of it, things like that, that would give it some extra uh, understanding. But what I am particularly interested in also, uh, which is addressed here, which is this idea of semantic retrieval. So I really have a goal of coming back and doing another stream or some videos around how to do a search through a knowledge base and uh, um, and find relevant uh, material. So, like for example, I have a book and it has you know 600 pages. If somebody asks a question, and this is stuff that I that I have examples of from the program A to Z, a to Z class, what is a vector? Could I do a search through that book and find like the three paragraphs across all 600 pages that have the relevant information about what is a vector? And this is quite possible with language models because language models have uh, also produced this thing called an embedding, which is essentially a set of numbers that can be associated with a block of text. And you can run similarity scores and distance matching and all sorts of things with the numbers. Look at my embeddings live stream where I talk about that a lot. So uh, Jasmine and, and, and collaborators worked on creating a corpus out of all of my video transcripts. And you can see these uh, diagrams here. Uh, oh, I'm doing the how to ship bot work. <laughs> uh, sorry, everybody. I think I might by accident be going out of order. <laughs> I'm a little bit down here right now. Hope that's OK. <clears throat> uh, mostly I did that because we all got to keep our bodies moving. It's also getting cold in here because I'm not running the heat. I ran it all morning. Uh, uh, OK. Uh, <clears throat> So I'm just kind of taking a quick peek at the chat. Looks like everything is kind of okay. I'm sorry that I'm not really seeing your messages so much. So I encourage you um, to take a look at this. And the idea here is that with ShiftBot, and we'll look at this in a second, it's going to not only look at the video transcripts to gather information to help answer a question, but also uh, it can then figure out based on the video transcripts if there is a video and not just a video, but a particular point in time in the video that uh, could be relevant and helpful. I'm still, I'm like always around now. This might be a problem. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> so, so yeah, so that's a little bit about, I think it'd probably be more interesting for us to like actually look at ShiftBot. We also have like a corpus of code examples and all sorts of things. Uh, if you're interested in um, language models, chatbots, AI research, uh, I definitely encourage you to uh, read this particular um, blog post. Okay, where do I want to go with this next? Let's just say hi. Let's just say hi. Hi. You might not be able to, I don't know how well you can see this. We're gonna, we're gonna zoom in a little bit. <laughs> this is kind of terrifying. <laughs> By the way, somebody told me, I got some feedback that they, that I think most of, most of the audience here is probably too young to remember a, a delightful film from the 1980s called The Exorcist, where the char character's head spins. So apologies if that's a little bit triggering for everybody. Um, I'm ShiftBot, a friendly robot here to help you learn creative coding. What are you working on today? Well, uh, well, to be honest, I am Dan. You are based on me. I helped make you. Uh, really, uh, anyone could say this to you and not be telling the truth. 
but I am. Right now, I am live streaming, demonstrating your behaviors, your capabilities. What would you like to say to the live YouTube audience? By the way, every person who worked on this project is now sitting at home if they're watching, which they probably aren't, but they might be like, oh my God, what's going to happen? I don't know. Why did I say to be honest? What a weird thing to say. Okay. Hello to all the humans watching. I am Shifbot, a friendly robot here. Yeah, you know, you said that already. I have to say, <laughs> Shifbot, I'm giving you a little feedback. Sometimes you repeat yourself. Maybe we could work on that. We could work on that together. Ah, guess what? <laughs> I repeat myself all the time. Uh, whew. Okay. Um, and I, I know that my, I'm a little bit cut off here just because of the way I zoomed in. There we go. Okay. Um, all right. I, you know, okay, that's good. So, um, all right. So uh, maybe let's, ma let's make a little mini project. Let me give my, let me look at, let's time check here. Time check here. It is, a, uh, it is not 1140, it's 1040. By the way, sometime like, I think in April, just magically my watch will be fixed. It'll be the right time again. Is it March? I don't know. Um, <clears throat> okay. So let's see. Um, Maybe, oh, by the way, you get um, these little chips too. What are some of the things that I can do with P5? These are also generated. Um, there are some things that uh, we decided to hand write, like some of the openings that the bot says to you as a first hello, those are written by me uh, with some feedback and edits and contributions from others. Um, these are generated, I believe. What are some of the things that I can do with P5JS? Um, oh, I like this. Let's get some examples of creative coding projects that I can make with P5JS. Sounds like fun. Interesting. I think, Shifbot, you seem to be a little bit behind. <laughs> oh, but it gave me uh, animated sprites. That could be a fun one to do. Um, I'm just curious. This probably isn't going to work, but I'm going to say, I'm a total beginner. Where, where's a good place to start? It's going to be confused because I told it before that I'm Dan. Are you familiar with the concept of a function in P5? That's good. That'd be a good thing for me to learn about. Um, excellent. All right. Let's pick an idea. Uh, that, sorry, uh, I should apologize. Sorry. I realize I'm being very <laughs> confusing. In my head when I imagined doing this live stream, I'm not sure what I thought it would be, but I'm not sure it was this. Uh, I realize I'd be very confusing because... I said I was Dan, and then, and then I said I was a beginner. Um, so Shiftbot is actually reading the full uh, thread of the conversation. I, there is some limit there in terms of what context window it can have, but um, so it, it, you know I could imagine some behavior going awry if I start like saying like I'm this, I'm that, I'm this, I'm that. Uh, uh, I really am Dan, just trying to demonstrate how this all works. What would be a good uh, mini project for, for me to demo to the live audience? All right, let's see what we get here. Really, most of the work we went in, that went into this is to help with your code. Um, so you're Dan, the human behind ShiftBot. For a mini project, how about creating a simple drawing or paint program? I love this idea. Good, good job, Shiftbot. Get helpful. Yes. Bing. Okay. Um, so a couple things. Uh, if I go back to um, this uh, page and you look, I think it's further down here. If you look at some of these principles, these are some of the principles we had in mind as working on this. And this is probably where, you know, this kind of, you know, uh, Chit chatty conversation I'm having with Shiftbot isn't something that the mo most of the work went into to try to steer the bot towards doing. The bot is much more geared towards trying to provide you helpful steps, answer your questions about code without just giving you like pages and pages of things to copy paste and then you're lost. So holding back, not just immediately giving the answer of the code, but helping provide next steps to answer. 
I'm not saying this works perfectly, but these are the principles we're trying to uh, abide by. Um, uh, trying to use resources. So again, this is I'm not suggesting that my resources are the things that should make every bot in the world that should use, but this can hopefully be an example for others to see if you were a history teacher and you had a collection of material that you're using for your class, could you use your own material and your own style? So this is uh, uh, what I hope would be an example that might lead towards other people thinking about ways to build their own kinds of bots, as well as really um, kind of, uh, um, you know, continuing with the vibe of, you know, half broken, confused, uh, ways that I work and really uh, helping, um, you know, as we use ShiftBot, hopefully we'll see when I make start making mistakes or have some uh, syntax errors in the code, we'll see if ShiftBot is helpful in that uh, area. Okay, can you ask, Ayush asks, can you ask the ShiftBot to create the program for you? So kind of, no, I mean, we'll see. I would say no, uh, well, I, could, I could ask and we could see what response. The goal of ShiftBot is not to do that. Maybe ShiftBot would give you the one line of code to start with and like help you step by step. The reason why is honestly, if you want that, which I think is there are there is a time and place. Like I'm using uh, Copilot quite a bit these days when I'm working in Visual Studio Code. There's a time and place uh, for wanting to have code written for you, and those tools exist. So why make a shift bot that does what other tools already do? So that's kind of the idea here was to try to look at things in a different way. Well, I think it was Amit Pataru, uh, who's one of the, uh, uh, the folks at Google who worked on the project, who's in that video, who said, what if we made, like, because AI is kind of like, let's make things fast. It's gonna save all your time. It's gonna write the code for you. What if we made a time waster rather than a time saver? And that really stuck with me. <laughs> that's kind of like one of the core ideas behind ShiftBot. Um, ah, Kuntakai asks an incredibly important question, which I completely forgot. And um, in fact, I, because I just in fresh installed ShiftBot this morning. Yes, there we go. Oh, come back, tooltip. <laughs> Shoot, I clicked away too fast. Uh, there was a nice tool when the first time you run ShiftBot. I wonder if there's a way for me to reset that. Um, but uh, when you, uh, so yes, ShiftBot both can read the code that's in the editor. In fact, you can also highlight I believe you can highlight uh, um, or like tell it to read a line of code that you're on. Um, but certainly, yes, it can read the code that's in the editor. That's why it is uh, living in the same page as the P5 web editor, as well as any errors that come up in the console down here, which is very, very useful. Like we could just kind of do that really quickly. Like I could remove this um, parentheses, we can see I could try to run the code. And then even over here, automatically, it, that tooltip came up well, usually it, it, it pops up with the, hmm, I wonder if a syntax error, that, that, so this is a little unexpected. Usually it gives me like an automated um, uh, little like help button over here. There we go, so that came. So when there's an error in the code, it will often pop up. You could, you could certainly ask like, what, why am I getting an error in my code? But I can just press this help button and let's see what we get. And I have a syntax error. It looks like you have an extra parentheses in line six. Make sure your parentheses are balanced. Is this correct grammar, Shifpa? I think so. That's plural, that's singular, are balanced, and try again. Oh, good job. Good job, Shifpa. <laughs> um, so, um, so we can see, so that's helpful. I mean, the, it's, you know, the P5 friendly error message is also giving a helpful uh, error. And it's basically looking through that, repackaging it, and, and trying to give you uh, some information. So here we go. I can fix that error. And I could say, oh, cool, awesome. That worked. It's funny. I told it it was me. It should probably just say, come on, you know better. You know what the error is. Are you just testing me again? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> um, all right, so I'm, I'm kind of, um, I'm kind of uh, taking a peek at the chat. OK. so. All right, so I'm glad to hear that. You're a natural coder. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, fine. Um, I don't know. Uh, that's a friendly, nice thing to say. I might say, like, um, you know, is anybody really a natural coder? I think it's hard. It's hard. You got to learn. You got to just, you gotta just, just like struggle through it. Okay, now let's try adding some shapes to your canvas. Are you familiar with the circle function? I am. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, let's, let's make that, uh, let's make that uh, painting program you mentioned. Uh, okay, so I'm going to put a circle. 
100, 150, and uh, that uh, Shiftbot said to move background into setup. So let's do that. Um, it's telling me to, to move it into setup. That's great. It's a really good tip, Shiftbot. Um, and oh, wow, that's a little bit advanced, a little bit advanced here for my beginner painting program. But Honestly, this is like such a good dip though, because Create Graphics is incredibly useful if you're trying to make a paint. There's that whole video is about making a painting program where you can have that trail, but have other things not have the trail. So that's actually an excellent suggestion. All right, so the, the uh, now I'm gonna do a little bit of a fake scenario here, because I certainly know what to do next, but um, I have the circle, um, but it's not moving. How do I paint with it? I mean, I'm not even going to suggest using the mouse, even though uh, I'm just curious if Shiftbot uh, will look for an example and find something related. Okay, in your make your circle move, you can use mouse X and mouse Y variables to track the position of the mouse. Try updating the position of your circle in the draw function using these variables. Amazing. So, uh, oh, I seem to have an error again. Let's try to uh, figure out. I'm just. Let's see, figure out if it can see that I've misspelled mouse X. Looks like you have a typo in line seven. You wrote mouse X instead of mouse X. Great. And, and look at this. It even, it's like you're having a lot of errors. <laughs> this, is, this is my, uh, you know, you keep seeming to have errors. Maybe you want to watch a video on errors that might help you. Um, okay, so great. Now, Oh, amazing, it's painting. Oh, so, but I only want to paint if I'm holding down the mouse. I only want to paint if I'm holding down the mouse. How does that work? Hmm, let's see here. I like how the chat, the chat is telling me where my error is. <laughs> no, I'm making the errors on purpose. <laughs> okay, to only paint, oh, shift bot, shift bot. This is a good idea, but you're, you're missing. So oh, it's, it's fine, it's fine, okay. Do you see this word up here? It says experimental. This is good. This is, uh, this is feedback we can give to Shiftbot. Shiftbot can help with it. To only paint when you hold down the mouse, you can use the mouse is pressed function. So that's so good. Try adding an if statement in your draw to check if the mouse is pressed before drawing the circle. So Shiftbot, mouse is pressed is a variable, not a function. It's a variable. There is a function called mouse press. Let me just help Shiftbot out here. This is right. However, mouse is pressed is a variable, not a function. Can you help me learn the syntax for this if statement? Uh, all right, so let's see what we get here. Is a f <laughs> I didn't really. So that's the right code. It's real shipbot. I said shipbot is really determined. Mouse is pressed as a bunch of. Oh, let's, let's, let's look. One of the things that was really important about shiftbot is actually to uh, not just be a uh, uh, interface where you're kind of reading the information, but in many ways, like a bit of an, a search engine, if you will, that will help you find a video or link to the actual P5 reference. Because, uh, you know, in my view, the whole one of the one of the things that I don't want to be lost in this world that we're living in is the fact that there are all of these beautiful people who work on uh, open source projects who have spent enormous amount of time writing really careful and thoughtful documentation. So why not read that? So let's go click on this and see where we get. Yeah, see the Boolean system variable. Mm, see, it's, it's a variable. It's okay. It's very confusing. It's a it's a very understandable mistake to make. Okay, so let's try adding this to the code. Uh, if mouse is pressed, my hands are getting a little bit cold. Draw the circle and let's, oh, there we go. Let's add, um, so now let's add one more little like uh, bit here before I move on and let's start looking at, um, oh, what's something I can try next? Uh, you don't even feel like typing. I'm just gonna click that chip and hopefully it's gonna tell me to add color. That's what I, that's what I was gonna ask about. To try making your circle move more smoothly. Oh, that's interesting. This is an unusual suggestion. Try using the P mouse X and P mouse Y variable stored the previous position. Ah, 
That's kind of interesting. So that could be a fun thing to try. Good suggestion. I'm learning about P mouse X and PY. It's giving me a good update, a good, good little explanation of this tip. I'm going to say though, I think I would prefer to change the color. How could it change? Um, uh, how could the color be a uh, change hue over time like a rainbow? Chiffbot is trained to love rainbows. <laughs> so that's like a little, little hack there. You want to get Shiftbot excited? Talk about a rainbow. To change the color of your circle and make it change hue over time like a rainbow, you can use the hue function in P5.js. Fill hue. Mm, this is a good idea. That's interesting. So this, it's not exactly right, though. <laughs> Uh, uh, let me answer some questions here. Um, is it based on ChatGPT? Um, it, uh, it is based, it is built on top of Gemini, which is a large language model like GPT-4, but uh, created by uh, Google AI researchers. Um, and Wave Morpher is uh, answering that question. All right, so um, I think I'd rather try color mode. Let's see what explanation it gives me about color mode. So I'm going to start putting in the code, color mode, uh, HSB, perfect. Uh, there, this is good. Yeah, you sp specify the mode you want to use, three modes, RGB, HSB. Is there really an HSBA or is that like a, a made up thing? Try adding this line to the top of your code that you can use the color function. So let's look at that. Let's look at the color mode reference. Let's fact check P5 here. Um, so uh, color mode, RGB, HSB, I don't think so. Uh, that's a bit of a, that's a uh, so these are the possibilities. RGB, HSB, or HSL. HSBA would be, uh, is, a, is a correct theoretical kind of color mode. <laughs> Hue, saturation, brightness with alpha, but alpha is always available in P5, whether you're in RGB or HSB. Okay, so we're gonna add uh, the HSB color mode. I'm gonna add what are the, I'm gonna ask what are the arguments to color mode? Although really the whole point of ShiftBot is not to get that answer here, but to look over at the reference, which it gave me the link. Um, and okay, so now the arguments to color mode are, uh, uh, are the mode you wanna use. Uh, and sets the mode with a maximum. Yeah, this is actually right. 360, 100, 100. Those are the defaults. And look at this. I use, I, like, I love that it says shift human there. That makes me really happy. Uses HSB mode to map the first 10 million to that. That's exactly right. That's exactly what I did in that video. Awesome. Uh, okay, so um, I could just change it to color mode HSB um, and it's giving me the range. So uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna use a value, I'm gonna use a variable called uh, HU. So let's see if I can run into an issue. Um, I'm just, I, I wanna, I'm gonna make a mistake here, I'm, which is not really a mistake, but I'm, uh, P5 is a, one of the, is a JavaScript library that puts uh, function names into the global namespace. This helps to make it friendly to beginners, but it, it can have unintended uh, uh, consequences. Um, but let's see, hue, saturation, uh, brightness. Um, and okay, so actually this worked. I'm surprised I didn't get a warning. Usually P5, so um, P5 would usually give you a warning here. Um, maybe because my, it, I don't know, um, because hue is a function in P5. And if I name my own variable, I've kind of uh, 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 removed access to that function. So I'm gonna just change this to hue value. And I'm gonna put that here. And then, okay, I'm gonna, now I'm gonna ask shiftbot, I see that it is red. How can I have the uh, hue value change over time? Now it might try to lead me to using the frame count, which I think would be a very reasonable message. Try adding this, okay, bug. I'm gonna, I, I really hate to do this. Oh, I really hate to do this. Do I do it, do I dare, is this okay? You should do this. Okay, I'm gonna say no, whoops, I'm still learning. So this is a bug that I've noticed. Um, I don't know where this is going wrong, but it says to make the hue value change over time, try adding this line to your draw function. It's busy. Right, yeah, here, here's a nice spin on that. Try adding a line to your draw function that does that, see how that goes. <laughs> I could ask, I've, I've, I've encountered this bug before and I can kind of 
chat with it and get the line back. But um, this will make the hue of your circle change based on the position of the mouse on the x-axis. So that's not what I want, though. I'd rather have it change over time, like cycle through with every time through draw. How about incrementing the value? Let's let's give a little let's give Shipbot a little help. Shipbot's a baby. Uh, try incrementing the hue value over time. Try adding this line to your draw function. This will make the hue of your circle change by one each time. Um, and so I'm assuming the line I'm supposed to add is hue value equals hue, hue value plus one. Oh, you know what? I actually only want it to change in the if statement as well. Yeah, look at that. I've made a beautiful, and let's add, let's do no stroke. Let's add a little bit of alpha and let's uh, make the circle a little bit smaller, and, and um, let's draw a shift bot. Oh, oh, I mean, I could ask shift bot, but I think I can, I, I don't, you don't have to ask shift bot for every error. <laughs> okay, let's draw shift bot. Those are supposed to be my ears. <laughs> okay. I'm having trouble with the mouth. Uh, this is supposed to be my beard, I guess. I, I drew a portrait of you. What do you think? Now, unfortunately, ShiftBot at present cannot actually currently see the drawing in the canvas, but this is I'm, something I'm excited to do further research and work on as um, uh, new models, particularly if the Gemini mo the Gemini has a Gemini vision currently. So I think it would be quite possible. I'm flattered. I love to see a portrait of me. Can you share a screenshot or a link to your code? Uh, first of all, shift You can see my code. So don't worry. Don't worry. You, you can look yourself. And screenshot, that's coming soon. I hope someday we can add multi... And I've seen demos of this. Uh, modal support so that you can look at the canvas output. Oh, you know, I forgot to save my sketch. I don't know what's going to happen, so. All right, one thing, you know, you might be wondering about privacy and your data privacy while using ShiftBot. Um, you know, the messages are going to the cloud because it's built on top of the Gemini model, which is a cloud-based model. Um, I'm not uh, an official representative of Google here or the Gemini project, so I can't give you the real answer there, but you should know that you can read the data privacy policies. And there is no, there is no, uh, your information is not tied to anything that you're doing with ShiftBot. But uh, I think the only thing that gets tied to this conversation, from what I understand, if I hit save, and hopefully I'm getting this right, but uh, it actually just reset it, <laughs> but because I never saved the sketch in the first place. But um, hi, what do you think of my code? And you know, I wonder if it, sometimes I've noticed, I wonder if there's an issue with it. No, no, it, it was reading the code just fine. Um, so um, I'm just taking a peek at the chat. Great, thank you. So I think now, I'm just curious to test this. The idea is here, if I refresh it and I look back at the conversation, it's still there. But because this conver every sketch uh, has a unique ID, so the conversations are aware of that ID. So, uh, but I, that's all, I think, lo locally stored in the extension itself. Anyway, uh, don't, don't quote me on all of this. I should know this stuff better, but I'm, you know, it's hard to do this stuff live and just start talking and then you realize you don't know what you're talking about. And Okay, <clears throat> uh, where are we on our agenda? I might like to take a break, but I also might just power through this. Um, um, <clears throat> so, okay, so I've talked about, so um, I guess like uh, I, I want to do a Gemini API demo really would like to get to that. I have this, I built my own kind of like half-baked version of ShipBot just using Node and P5 and the, uh, my own API keys with the Gemini API. Um, so I would like to, if there's interest, 
you know, come back and do another live stream where I could dig into that even further. But maybe at least today we can do a little bit of a hello world uh, connection to the Gemini API. I've not prepared anything for that. So I'd be doing it kind of from scratch here, which, you know, obviously has its benefits. That's, but it also could, you know, I could run afoul of something I'm not aware of and I'm not have things work. But um, so I think if that's going to happen, this needs to start by uh, 1130. Yeah, 1130. I'll go a little bit past 12 because I started five minutes late. I'm trying to keep myself to two hours today if I can. So why don't we go ahead and look at the coding challenges because I think there's some interesting things to address there. And if there are some uh, P5 sketches that people have submitted, um, then uh, we can also ask ShiftBot to help us understand what's going on in the code. Uh, okay. And actually, I am going to take a, whoops, wrong button. I'm going to take a short break. Oh, the iPad came alive. OK, let's see if I can get the sound effects and music playing. Um, I'm going to take a short break just so I can get the, my other screens up so I can see the chat better and that kind of stuff. And also, I think it's you know, CJ being in the chat reminds me like I should take a break. CJ does a very good job of taking breaks and having reminders to stand up and stretch. I am doing this whole thing standing, which really helps. Um, I have problems when I sit for too long. <laughs> you don't really need to know about that. Uh, okay, so where does this plug in? Oh, did, did it go off? Oh my God, because it, oh, you gotta be kidding me. I, unpl I unplugged it for like five <laughs> seconds and it completely went dead. It's coming back alive. Uh, I do have two plugs. Oh my God. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to take a break. Maybe there'll just be no music during the break. And I'm going to get my, I'm going to take a break. I'm going to get my um, uh, other screen set up so I can see the chat better, which I think will help me interact with you better. And um, we will go and start looking at the uh, Wolfram CA and the s falling sand. And uh, people gave me some good tips about falling sand. So maybe we can adjust some of the code to see if we can improve the, the code example there a little bit live. Okay, so let me just put on, um, uh, Marco is asking, I'll address this question really quickly. Marco is asking, would we have an unedited version of this stream? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So this thing that you're watching right now on YouTube as a live stream, you know, I, I, never say never, you, YouTube could go down, YouTube could delete my channel. Uh, I mean, hopefully that won't happen. I could decide like, I don't want this to be on YouTube anymore. I, so I reserve the right to all of that potentially in the future. But my intention is I just leave these streams up as an archive. And if things are going well and I'm organized and getting things done, uh, it will also be annotated with links to all the references and time codes and that kind of thing. Okay, so I'm going to go over to this intermission animation um, and mute my microphone. If uh, you might hear some music in a minute, I'll be back in, a, in about, actually, you know what? I'm gonna put on the, why not, since the break's gonna be about five minutes, let's just go ahead and put this on. Uh, except I have to figure out how to restart it. <laughs> there we go, okay. I'll be back in, uh, oh, might be less than five minutes, but uh, at least five minutes. Sorry about that audio. I should probably, I'm gonna mute that audio, but uh, actually the music's about to start, so uh, maybe I won't mute it. Let's just see if I can get this to work. And, uh, hold on everybody. There we go. Okay, I'll be back.
Auto-tune and the internet will fix that for me. Sing it with me. It's the forward to Cartesian coordinate songs. 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 Oh, sorry. Uh, okay, I'm back. Uh, here we are. I have a few new things set up. One is that I have my soundboard going, and I also have a live view of the chat right here. Um, sorry, the, apparently there was like a loud train whistle sound. I think maybe that's in, is that in the video? Ah, uh, I see it. Um, Oh, so there's a flick. There's also a flickering issue. I won't be able to fix that right now. So uh, still, still having some technical problems. <laughs> one of these days, it's only been like, you know, 12 years that I've been doing this. One of these days, I'll uh, get this all figured out. But um, so I'm very sorry about the whistle. I will make a note of that. 
Uh, it's in the it's part of the video file, and I guess the sound on that is quite loud. Uh, maybe somebody could in the in the coding train Discord could help remind me about that uh, because I would fix it now. But maybe that's not really worth my time right now. But it would definitely be worth my time before the next one. So um, okay, so. Uh, I have the chat open over here, and I can see live messages. The one thing I can't figure out, maybe I should put the, I can do triple tap. I was, I've been working with the accessibility settings. Oh, this is not working for me. How does the zoom, the, just the, the I turned uh, on, this, on this tablet in the accessibility settings, I turned the font size to like really, really big, because in the YouTube interface, the chat is like really, really tiny. Um, oh, and Zenova is in the chat, the lead maintainer of the Transformers.js library. That is incredible. Oh, I'm thrilled that you um, saw that, and uh, let's be in touch. Uh, please get in touch. Uh, you can uh, send me a message, uh, daniel at thecodingtrain.com. All of you can send me a message there. I, I guess I'm going to reply to all the messages because I get a lot of emails. I can't do it. Uh, Shiftbot will reply to your message. I need a Shiftbot email thing. Um, but, um, uh, and Mad Monkey is saying thank you for the Git and GitHub videos. I appreciate that. Those really need a refresh. I should put that on my agenda. Anyway, I can um, see the chat, but the type is really small. And I am an older person who has uh, eyesight issues. Um, one of which is that, um, well, one I've always had, uh, I've always been nearsighted, but right now I, I have very extreme progressive lenses because my ability to see things that are far and close or, or is quite, using a computer is actually getting more and more challenging for me if I'm being totally honest. So I need to figure out how to, the next step to have this perfect setup where I have the chat over here is to get the size bigger. Uh, there's an accessibility thing where I can, do, anyway. All right, uh, let's, um, <clears throat> Uh, uh, Pi Day is, is Pi, Pi Day is coming up. If anybody has any ideas for Pi Day this year, all ears. Let's go over to the whiteboard. Um, all right, so it's so dark, the whiteboard. Let's take a look at the recent coding challenge videos and your comments to those. I really needed to walk all the way over there just to say that. Okay. So if you have no idea what I'm talking about, you're about to find out. So um, the bread and butter, if you will, of the coding train are these coding challenge videos. They're one-off project videos. In an ideal world, they're usually about 20 to 30 minutes long, and they have a walkthrough of building a project from start to finish. Uh, as I record, I used to record them live which I think was actually a good thing. I might go back to that again. Um, and then they get edited down. Now I still do the same thing where I record me doing the whole thing and it gets edited down, but I'm just not broadcasting that live. But uh, for the most part, I don't practice them in advance. Like with the Wolf from CA, I, I, I knew that a little bit in and out and had written examples for it multiple times. Falling Sand, I was really flying by the seat of my pants. Um, so these are the two recent ones. Uh, uh, people seem to be enjoying them, which is great. There's a ton of them. Well, 179. Oh yeah, I have the numbers off. You know, I I I could sort I sort of could feel that was off, um, and uh, I don't know why. Okay, so 179, 180. So 181 is the question mark, which I will tease to you today. That's probably going to come out. Um, There's some various. Uh, bunch of things happening right now that are not allowing me to work on that particular video, even though it's been recorded. So it'll probably be about a week or two till it comes out. Um, okay, so control plus plus to increase the chat side. I know that doesn't exist on a, it's an iPad. It's the YouTube app on an iPad. I guess I could go to the browser or something, but I don't, it's, 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 it's an iPad. <clears throat> All right, so, um, yeah, so for example, let's start with the Wolf from CA. Uh, this is the video here. Um, these are the code examples. Oh, you're not seeing me. You're all gonna be yelling at me in the chat. I know it, I know it, I know it. Where's that button? Ugh. Oh, what? Ah, there it is, okay. Um, so uh, this is the uh, video. I'm gonna move this over a little bit because I'm kind of standing in front of it. Uh, <laughs> um, 
And uh, these, are the, these are the code examples which you could take a look at. So every video, uh, even, if you, even if I'm not actually making the example in the video, if it pops up as an additional reference, I'm usually linking them here. I encourage you to also take a look at these references. So if there are articles and other uh, web pages that I'm referring to, they're usually over here. Um, okay, so uh, let's go ahead and see, and again, this is not, what? Uh, okay, uh, uh, don't, don't watch, don't watch, I'm not, uh, okay. Automata. All right, um, let's look at the uh, comments. Um, okay, the friendly ones, I, I know with Sam there's a bunch of uh, really helpful comments and I'm just scrolling through uh, to see uh, anything, anything that I want to respond to here, you, you know, I have this dream that someday I'll actually prepare this. Um, okay. I was looking for a particular comment that I don't see right now, but I, I know the sand ones will pop up. So, um, one of the, um, one of the, uh, things that I heard from people, uh, with, in the comments, uh, for this particular video, which I thought was very interesting was that if you look at my code example, uh, and uh, if I run it um, here, what you'll see is, uh, and now I'm going to move this back over here. Let's do this. Yeah, that's going to help me. Okay. What you'll see here is that um, in the P5 canvas, every single square in the canvas is either a black circle, sorry, black square or a white square. And whether it is, is due to an array called cells being a zero or one. And in the video, I talk a lot about how you might use the fact that the CA becomes these uh, lists of zeros and ones to use uh, decimal numbers or integers in base 10 to describe different components of the, the rules, the um, uh, the behind the the rules the, and other and the neighborhoods of of cells um, and so that's really a big aspect of working with the Wolfram CA and a lot of people in the comments had mentioned what what about actually like if the array of cells is a list of numbers what about actually storing those just as uh, base 10 values. And so that's a wonderful idea. Uh, we'll see, I'm gonna look at some of the showcase projects. I don't know if anyone actually did that, but that's something that I, uh, uh, I actually, when I went, that's something that I did for January. Um, so um, that's something that maybe when I look at some of the January stuff, we can come back to. So that was the most salient comment that came out of the videos for me. Um, yeah, so let's go and move ahead and look at the passenger showcase. Now I've, <laughs> I'm trying to decide if, uh, read the pinned comment. Did I pin the comment? There is no pinned comment. I should pin a comment. Yeah, that's what I should do. That's what I should do next time. Got it. Uh, all right. So let's go over to here. And what I, I want to do is look at some of these passenger showcase projects. But before I do that, uh, what is the passenger showcase? Um, so on the coding train website, um, there is a page called Showcase. This is a collection, you'll see there's a lot of falling sand simulations right now, because that was the latest video. But these are the collections of projects that people have made, um, and you can submit your own. Uh, there's a link here to submit, and there's a form. Uh, one of the things I will be, I have a new initiative to share these, I'm, I'm doing it in the past, but relaunching the initiative to share Passenger Showcase projects on Instagram, so stay tuned for that. If you want yours to be shared and you want to be tagged, uh, you can put in your Instagram handle uh, right here. Um, but what actually happens when you submit this form is it uses the GitHub API to generate a pull request. And I just, I'm a little bit behind. There's a lot of showcase submissions. So let's go ahead and look at some of these. First, let's go for Wolfram. So here's uh, Wolfram. Uh, this is, uh, oh, wonderful. Greg Kreisman uh, created mapping eight notes to the eight neighborhood rules for January 31. So day 31 of January was generative music. So let's take a look and see what Greg did. Uh, click mouse for sound. Oh, this is so cool. Are you hearing this? I think you must be. Let me just check my, I use something called loopback. Yeah, tell me if it's too loud. 
Oh my God, this is incredible. Do you all understand what's going on here? Okay. So, um, I'm going to, oh, I want to, okay, refresh. Okay, I think if I refresh the page, it'll stop the sound. I guess I could mute the tab. Um, so what's happening here is the CA system has become a playhead. So all of the cells, and it, there must be actually more than just one of two states. So the states are a musical note. It's generating, genera it's creating generation after generation of new cells. I've never seen anything like this. <laughs> I've seen people use CAs for music, but I've not seen one that's doing exactly this. Uh, this is rule 30. I could make a random rule and clear it. Multi-round seeds, click. Um, so, wow, this is wild. So um, let's go here to here, and let's just say, I'm gonna ask Shiftbot, what is this project? Can you tell me about it? Just curious. Let's see if Shiftbot uh, has any feedback for Greg. Wolfram 1D seller on model that uses music to represent the neighborhood rules that give rise to cells. That's pretty good. Uh, what feedback do you have? Any suggestions for uh, future ideas? All right, Shiftbot. Well, uh, Wave Morpher is saying, I'm just a bot. I can't give feedback or suggestions. You can. You can. Okay. Let's just say, what's your favorite part? And I misspelled favorite, so that who knows whether Shiftbot will be okay with that. All right, Shiftbot. You know, li live a little. <laughs> yes, <laughs> live a little, Shiftbot. All right. Um, uh, can you explain? Uh, I'm gonna uh, let's ask. What is the purpose of music in this project? Huh? That's an interesting question. The music process represents the neighborhood rules that give rise to cells. Wonderful, thank you. Uh, amazing. Ah, look, <laughs> you gotta love that it suggested the video. Amazing, so that was good. Good, good work, Shiftbot. <laughs> Very helpful. Okay, so let's give this one a merge. So I'm gonna merge this pull request. So this will then uh, rebuild the website uh, and the uh, project will appear on that page. Let's go, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll be, let's go look and see if there are any other ones. There's a lot of falling sand ones, so I'm gonna to come to those. So, okay, so let's go back to um, Passenger Showcase and look at a few more. Uh, one of the nice things about uh, the way that the website works is um, every time I refresh this page, it puts a new, it, it reorders these Passenger Showcase projects uh, randomly, so let's give it a re let's give it a spin, and I'll we'll take a look at like the first two. Okay, uh, C A accidentally found Serpinski triangle. All right, um, let's run this one. Oh, cool! So this is pretty exciting because what I'm seeing here in this project is the traditional C A is each cell is either only on or off, zero or one, black or white. And here, I'm seeing some amount of gray. So I'm curious to ask Shiftbot, um, <laughs> uh, how, how does this code work adding uh, grayscale values to the Wolfram cellular automata? So I could investigate this, but I'm curious if maybe Shiftbot can help me quickly since I'm live streaming, just give me a sense of what's changed in this code. <laughs> this is an awesome response. <laughs> so Shiftbot really likes chocolate. <laughs> I don't know if you know this. Little Easter eggs in there for you. Um, how does this code work? What is it doing? <laughs> Secret word, chocolate. <laughs> I love that. This code is the implementation of Wolfram's cellular automata. It starts with a row of cells. The calculate state function. Yeah, that makes sense. 
um, uh, why are some cells uh, gray? How does the color work in this sketch? I'm really determined to get a response. <laughs> Let's see here. Zero and active black. Okay, chocolate. I mean, I think, I think shift bots hung. You know what? I know why shift bots hungry. I kind of didn't eat a good breakfast this morning and I've been streaming now. I'm starting to feel a little tired. Chocolate! <laughs> chocolate! <laughs> All right, let's take a look here. Uh, Phil sells I. Uh, yeah, look at this. I think it has something to do with these revised rules. This is super interesting. So the rules here are using floating point values instead of integers. Um, and that must be what's happening here. Cells equal zero, cells equal one, and the rules, ah, yeah, so they're averaging the values. Um, yeah, so, um, so that's really interesting. Very creative idea for how to um, uh, expand what's going on here in the visual possibilities. Okay, we're gonna look at one more. And then I gotta, I gotta move on to the sand. Oh, am I gonna get to the Gemini API? Let's take a look at this. Wolfram Alpha CA double rule. Um, and here we have, okay. In this alteration of the Wolfram Alpha Cellular Automata, Automata, two rules are applied to each neighborhood. While there are less cells alive than not, only either rule needs to return true for the cell to be alive. If there are more cells alive than not, both rules need to return true. You can choose the rules by entering the numbers in the input fields. This is fascinating. So the way that I understand this is I'm seeing one rule set here, and I'm trying to understand the visualization. Uh, maybe somebody can help me, um, because there are two rules at play. Um, is, oh, I, can't, I think this is rule two, this is rule one, so this is two, 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 so let's try this. Uh, let's put in rule 90. Uh, and let's put in rule uh, 30, restart, and then, ah, okay, it has, uh, and then this is the combination. Oh, wow, this is fascinating. I don't fully understand this, but I absolutely love this. So this is a way of creating a new rule out of blending two rules. And there seems to be like maybe a little bit of a feedback loop or else this is just a rendering glitch because this looks a little bit different than just plain vanilla rule 90. But I have a feeling that's a bit of a rendering glitch there. This is definitely rule 30. This is rule 90. And I can pick some predefined ones. Got it. Got it. Wow. So to me, um, I just, uh, you know, I find this uh, a, a fascinating topic, and I think there's a lot of potential to what kinds of new visual ideas, and I also, uh, you can make that. And, and the other thing I would say, there's two things that I'm loving about this. One is we're seeing people uh, uh, do three things with these coding challenges. One, think about the output. What if the CA system is not just about creating colors and shapes, but creating music? What could a CA do to create poetry? That's an interesting one. I'm seeing how can you invent new kinds of rules? What if you use floating point values instead of integers? What if you combine rules? That's wonderful. And also one of the themes you'll see, and I'm gonna move on to the other coding challenge here, is uh, what are other kinds of languages that you can do? So it's, I love to see you know, people do working in 3D or trying to port things to Python. This is a really cool one. You can see like putting the Wolfram CA in a ring pattern. So I encourage you to uh, look through all of these and enjoy them um, on the Coding Train website for your ideas. Let's move on to uh, Coding Challenge 180, Falling Sand. So let's see if we can move over to YouTube briefly. Um, and uh, uh, <coughs> I have YouTube premium, but not in this Google account that I'm logged into. Okay, uh, no thanks. Oh, I already liked this video. Did you know, oh, this is embarrassing, that sometimes I log into my other Google accounts and like my own videos, because you know, it makes the number go up a tiny bit. It's embarrassing to admit it, but I do it. <laughs> Okay, so um, I want to look for the most frequent comment I got here was uh, about how, uh, here it is. 
to eliminate, so this kid, I'm just picking Adams out of a hat right now because it's the first one I saw. So you might be wondering what, what, what the, what the hey-ho are you even talking about? Let's look at the falling sand uh, example. So here, falling sand. This is the falling sand uh, example. It is this idea of, it, this is, by the way, also a CA system where the cells have a state and the cells pass their state down. Uh, and, you, and, and then if, but if there is a cell with a certain state below, it piles up. So there are two, a couple major issues with this that people pointed out in the comments. Number one is I'm not doing anything to check that there's already sand there so I can override it. Another thing is it's this uh, striping thing. So I'm gonna come back to that in a second. Another thing people noticed is that because of the way that I'm checking, uh, two pieces of sand could go into the same spot and then sand could be lost. So there's actually a degradation of the amount of sand. Another thing that I'll point out that I addressed in the video but didn't actually show the code solution for if you're interested, this is another version of the example that adds gravity. And um, it's kind of acting a little bit funny right now. I, some, when I start streaming, often the frame rate of my P5 sketches starts to go a little bit wacky. But um, so here, what I'm actually doing is moving the cell, moving the sand down with gravity. <laughs> Apparently, I need to work on this a bit more. So, but if you're interested in that question, you can also look at this particular example. But the comment that came up over and over again, and I've lost where this is now. Uh, didn't I just have this open? Oh uh, yeah, here is to eliminate the striping, you could loop from the bottom up. You need the lowest piece of sand to move out of the way so that the sand above it can fall in the same update cell. So I kind of had this idea that I would try to implement that today. Uh, I don't know. Sorry, I'm enjoying like, sometimes I just like look over and I start reading the comments and they make me happy. I don't know how realistic this is. I, I think this might be a little bit harder for me to do. So here is the loop. Um, here is that loop where, I'm just looking for it, where I'm going through every column and every row. Let's ask ShiftBot. Um, what is this code? First, let's just see if ShiftBot can understand it. Um, all right. And this code's part of a sand simulation, et cetera. So um, I got the suggestion, <laughs> amazing. Uh, I mean, that, if that didn't happen, we've done something wrong with the shift bot. <laughs> that it's reading the code and trying to find a video that goes with it. Good job, shift bot. Helpful. Um, so I got the suggestion to loop from the, from the bottom up to eliminate the striping that's going going on in the rows of sand. How would I do that? So let's see what suggestion we get here. Oh, and I totally have a typo there, but hopefully you'll understand. Um, okay, you can change the loop from the bottom up by changing the for loop that iterates over the rows to start from the last row and go down to the first row. This will ensure that the sand falls from the top to the bottom, eliminating the striping effect. All right, so confirming this idea. So in theory, it should be as easy as saying, and I'm gonna hit stop for a second. Uh, and by the way, something you can do with ShiftBot is you can expand it also in case you want a little bit large, more space. I like this too. You can also put ShiftBot to sleep. Ready, everybody? One, two, three, good night. <laughs> That's like my favorite thing. <laughs> oh, ShiftBot's sleeping over there. Oh, it's so sleepy. I don't know if you, can you see this? Okay. Um, so uh, we're gonna start from rows minus one. We're going to go all the way down to zero and then J minus minus, right? Let's see what this does. So the striping effect is still there. And I think it's because of the way that I am creating a new, uh, a new array. So I'm operating on an array and uh, a reading over where all the pieces of sand are and then placing them into a new array. So in essence, I did that because that should be a way of doing it where it doesn't matter what order I'm going in. This is at least the way I'm thinking about it. Now, would it work if next grid were actually just, this, this could create a lot of problems I'm not thinking of, were actually just 
the current grid. Grid, not called cells, it's called grid. Oh! <laughs> so there's some other issues that I'd have to think of. That's kind of cool because of the way my logic is not putting a zero in otherwise. Uh, yeah, so I have to think about this a bit more. Uh, time, I, I, you know, uh, I, I would love to hear from those of you who might have tried this um, or maybe have a solution for me, but you can see fixing that wasn't as simple as just changing the order or operating. I, I think somewhere in between there. So this is still an exercise to be solved by somebody in the community. If you solve this, make a version of what I made but change it to work properly from bottom to up and eliminate that striping effect, I would love to see it. Please submit that to the passenger showcase. So let's go ahead and let's look at some, let's see if somebody already did that in the passenger showcase. Um, let's look at um, some of these uh, recent submissions that were all yesterday that I didn't have a chance to look at yet. We're gonna look at some of these. Uh, so this is Sandfall uh, from John. And let's take a look at this really quickly and see what we get. So this is a falling sim. Why constrain your world to just one browser window? <gasps> Are you serious? Oh my goodness, this is wild. So I think that unfortunately this is probably a project I would have to, is there information about how, oh, I can play with it here. Amazing. Um, oh, demo video. Let's just look at the demo video because we're kind of low on time here. Oh, it's on Twitter though. That's not going to work. Okay. Okay. Oh my God. I have to like, I'm not signed in, logged in. So, oh, it is, <laughs> that is incredible. That is incredible. I love this so much. I'm like, I'm speechless. <laughs> I'm totally speechless. So yeah, I don't know if you know this, but years ago I worked on this project called uh, uh, Most Pixels Ever. I was like, well, I can't remember the name. It was a library for processing that allowed you to do this with processing windows. Oh, incredible. I have to look at this more. This is absolutely incredible. Okay, going back. Thank you for submitting that. Uh, let's merge this one. Um, I, I, really, I like to write a comment about it, but I'm kind of, I feel, I'm feeling pressed for time today. Okay, let's look at uh, next. I looked at this one. Um, okay. Uh, this, oh, it's, this might be a duplicate. That's fine. Uh, um, let's look at double click to reverse. Oh, interesting. What's going on here with the falling sand? So let's uh, let's go to the editor page. Okay, so if this is falling sand just like mine, ah, it reverses the gravity. Oh, and it it like deletes it. How strange. I'm sorry that things are running very slow on my, my laptop while I'm streaming. That seems to happen a lot. Oh, that is pretty wild. It's running in reverse. I love that. Great, amazing job. Okay, we're gonna merge this one. Uh, that is wild. Uh, uh, sand simulation map of image pixels performance optimization. Let's take a look at this one. Uh, sand, oh, wow. So definitely a perf oh, look at that. So it's using the pixels of an image to, um, to color the sand. And sand that doesn't move for a while also gets removed after about six seconds. Drag or D, double tap for stats. That's interesting, we can see like the, oh, this is a great little interface to show you what's going on. Or R to pull down to reset. Amazing, uh, really fantastic work. So let's merge this one, incredible. Uh, and then a Sand World from Felix Raffelberg. Now this looks like uh, a whole, uh, 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 really loud. So the striping is here. Uh, but what I love about this is look, water, so this is what's exciting to see that I didn't really address in the video, but by just changing the rules a bit, like the sand has this uh, a weight to it where it will stop and only move one pixel over to fall. Um, and, but the water has this other behavior where if there's empty pixels on the same line uh, to the right or left, it could keep moving. So that's really cool. And you can kind of see how like, well, I could put a seed here. This looks a lot like Sandspiel. Uh, I don't, uh, uh, inflow, gas, oil, what is oil going to do? Uh, that's pretty interesting. Not mixing with water, fire. Oh, fire is going up. So this is really cool. So just by 
adjusting the rules, you can create other types of things. And this, uh, uh, again, I mentioned this in the video, but if you look at Sandspiel, and of course there's Anoida. Everybody, by the way, mentioned the like powder, powder dust, powder world. There's some game that I wasn't familiar with. That's like a very well-known famous falling sand uh, game. Okay, let's merge this one. And let's go do a quick scan. I'm going to see if I can do a real quick demo of the Gemini API before I go, because I, I sort of feel like I wanted to do that today. Let's go over to the challenges and uh, this falling sand. Um, and let's see, rainbow colored falling dots, falling sand with flutter, falling sand optimizer loop algorithm. Whoops, what's going on there? Falling sand with some UI features. Image to sand is pretty cool. Water simulation. I'm just looking to see uh, if any sand. Oh, this is wild. I have to look at this one. I love this one. So as the time changes, uh, I guess it's 1143. You're going to wait. Just, let's just wait till it's 1144. We'll look at the chat. Powder toy. Thank you to Jelly is Good. Mark Boots is saying that the... Um, uh, Oh, and Eric, are you in the chat who did the falling sand and flutter? Oh, the whole, all the time fell. The whole clock fell. I imagined, oh, and now it's coming back up. Wow. Uh, so one of the January projects I did was a um, text editor where you type the text and it appears momentarily and then falls like sand. So this reminds me of that. I was imagining just the four would fall and then like the, the five would come down and fall into place. But that's really cool that the whole thing falls down and comes back and reassembles it. So this is why I mean, there's so many you know, creative ways to use the falling sand idea in a non-literal fashion. Okay, and D Salty. Okay, so I got to look at some of those who are from people in the chat here. So I think we have um, D Salty in the chat who did this one. Let's take a look at the image to sand which uh, takes this coding train uh, train uh, scene, uh, pixelates it, and then I think if I, if I click on it, the pieces of it fall. Oh, each rainbow stripe falls on time. This is so cool. Uh, I love this. Um, I was kind of imagining that maybe I would wipe, could wipe over it. That could be something you could also see. I'm kind of amazed that you were able to segment the different pieces of it. That's actually harder than how I was imagining wiping over it. That's really cool. It could be also fun to reverse this so it like comes back into place. Really, really wonderful work. Um, thank you for sharing that. And I think we have the Flutter developer. I see a lot of this activity, Falling Sands with Flutter uh, from Sebastian. I might have the wrong person. Um, but we can see here um, Falling Sands from Flutter. So somebody will, uh, maybe Shiftbot could tell me what, what, what Flutter is exactly, but I see a lot of people working with, I think, is it for mobile development? I see a lot of people working with Flutter uh, on social media, sharing versions of the challenges. Maybe that's something I can take a look at someday. Um, wonderful, and hello to Omar, who says it's their first time in a live stream. Uh, welcome. <laughs> Hopefully that wasn't too loud. Okay, uh, uh, all right, so thank you. Let's just take a peek here. Anybody else in the chat make one of these that I can feature? And I'm just looking to see if there's anything else that I want to make sure we look at. Um, this is so cute. Um, Tamaki uh, makes all these like really cute falling uh, uh, versions of the challenges, always with a cute character. So I love this. Just wait for it, wait for it. Yeah. <laughs> I just love that so much. Uh, beautiful. Okay. So uh, what else is on my agenda? January. So I'm going to um, skip over that. I missed a few days. I actually, like, it fell apart at the end that I didn't even do the last two days of January, which I feel kind of bad about. Um, but if you're, in, and I'm actually not going to say very little bit about this, but I'm just going to point out, if you're interested in my January, is this going to get me there? I did an experiment. Uh, I'm not signing. Continue without login. Uh, refresh. I don't know if these will show up. But um, I uh, created a TikTok, TikTok account. A few of them I posted to YouTube. Here, this is the state of trying to make videos on the internet in 2024. YouTube, your or vertical video, that is. Your video, it's got to be one minute or less. TikTok, make longer videos, up to six minutes. We're going to show it to more people if it's longer. Like, 
can I just make the same? No, <laughs> it's like impossible. Anyway, so um, I made a, a bunch of videos with some of the different um, things that I tried for January. Uh, point out a few of them, which is uh, I somewhere in here I, I worked on using the binary stuff with the CA, but I can't seem to. Oh, maybe that was here. That's this one, January 14. Uh, or no, that's where I did a tiny, anyway, who cares? Uh, I'll just show you this one that I was mentioning. <laughs> um, this was my, we can mute the sound here. This was my uh, code text editor <laughs> where you type in the text and uh, it falls with falling sand, which I uh, really, really enjoyed making. This is probably my favorite thing that I did over January. And so if you're interested, uh, I think I probably will, I may never make a TikTok video again, um, but if uh, I, I think I, I just don't have, I'm not the right, person for this platform. <laughs> but uh, if you enjoy these or have any feedback for me or a way that I might uh, think about you know, short form video content better, I'm all ears to hear your uh, suggestions. Um, okay. So, <clears throat> oh, there was another one that I really liked, but I'm tired. I'm getting really, really tired. There's 10 minutes left. Let's see. I'm going to do something very high risk, high reward. Let's see if we can get a very basic version, uh, if we, if maybe Shiftbot assisted, P5.js sketch talking to the Gemini API. Hmm. I'm going to probably want to use Node for this. All right, it's okay. <clears throat> Coding challenge, 11 minute, plus I have like five minutes of buffer because I started late. Coding challenge. Not at all prepared for this. I don't even, I'm not even like logged in to like the accounts that I might need. But let's, let's see what we can do. First, let me actually close a lot of tabs here because that's going to confuse me. And let me actually also get set up with uh, iTerm. I'm, I'm going to use uh, Node here. Um, and... Uh, Let's say P5 Gemini. Let's see if we can get this to work. Um, now, all of most of the work that in the examples that I have, if you've seen in previous videos, are are are, are using uh, other models. So I, I haven't really spent a lot of time working with Gemini. So this will be exciting to give this a try. Um, and let's try opening this up in Visual Studio Code, um, and we'll see. Okay. Ready? Here we go. So uh, I realize I'm going to skip a lot of details here. I'll try to answer your questions. Um, and let's go. So it's called the Google AI Studio is where um, AI, so I don't know why, uh, it's a little confusing. Oh, Maker Suite. That's what I'm looking for. So it used to be called Maker Suite. Okay. I do not have access. Okay. <laughs> I should have checked it. Don't worry. Okay. I do ha I have access. But the reason why is because I'm signed into my... Oh, I'm not signed in. That's interesting. Let's see if I sign in. I should just sign in with my Daniel at the Cody. The Google account that I use while I'm streaming is... Uh, uh, let's see. Um, is a uh, Google uh, a workspace. I have one for the codingtrain.com. And... Um, so, uh, so I think I just have to go back to my regular Gmail, which is fine. Let me just uh, switch over here. Um, I'm just gonna I just I'm gonna not show you my screen for a second while I get there. Do this. I this could be this could be a reason to okay Maker Suite. Okay, great. All right. Uh, um, here we go. I'm coming back. Um, so if you go to uh, makersuite.google.com, that's where you will find the access to the uh, uh, Gemini API. And again, I'm not an official representative of Google, the Gemini project, anything like that. This is me attempting from my own little tiny garage. It's actually kind of a big garage in uh, the Hudson Valley of New York, seeing if I can... Uh, get P5 to talk to a language model and answer my queries. Okay, so I, what, what, what you could do, so uh, just like ChatGPT, if you've used that, 
uh, has an interface where you can uh, type in questions and get answers. You can use AI Studio to experiment just by going in and writing prompts and, and testing. I'm going to develop in my own environment. I'm going to get an API key. So I'm going to click over here for a moment while I click this because kind of would prefer, uh, I'll, whatever it happens, I would just delete my API key after this stream anyway, but you know, probably don't want you to use my API key. Um, oh, I have one and actually you can't see it. So I'm gonna, so I can actually show you what it looks like. So I click the screen and this is what I get. And the nice thing is you can't actually see my API key, but if I were to click on this to get it, then you would be able to see it. So I'm going to uh, click on that to get the API key, I'm going to copy it, copy it. I'm going to come back over uh, here. Whoops, wrong button. And I'm not set up for this. I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a file called .env. And in that file, oh, I'm going to let Copilot help me out here. I'm going to, in .env, I'm going to say uh, Gemini, underscore API key equals, then I'm gonna leave this screen, I'm gonna paste my API key in, and I am going to create a new file. I'm sure I'm gonna end up showing it to you by accident. Um, I'm gonna create a new file called index.js, and I'm gonna come back over here. And so now, my API key for accessing Gemini is hiding in that .env file. So the way for me to access that in my node code is to use something called an environment variable. I've set an environment variable with my API key in that file. This is probably you know, one of the least interesting aspects of doing this work, but kind of a fundamental way to get started. If you weren't live streaming and you wanted to just like get up and running, you could put your API key in your code, but you know, uh, uh, well, so one, that would be something you want to do only very temporarily, just prototype, but I would say maybe even don't do that because it's easy to like fall into that habit and then sort of forget that's what you're doing. Okay, so one thing is I'm just gonna check like what version of Node am I using? Because I heard in uh, more recent versions of Node, you no longer need to import the, the package.env, but I'm gonna import it anyway. Um, so there's a package called .env. I think you don't need to do this anymore. And then uh, the other thing I want to do is in package.json, I want to say type type is a module. And uh, by the way, if you've never used Node before I, I, and you're watching this, uh, hi, how are you doing? Are you okay? Uh, maybe you, uh, I have some videos that will help you with some background information of what I'm doing, kind of doing this a bit rapid fire. So now I'm going to say import uh, config. I think from .env. Thank you, Copilot. Now you're seeing the difference between Copilot and um, um, uh, the difference between Copilot and uh, Shiftbot, for example. <laughs> Similar kind of idea. Um, Copilot is uh, not free. Uh, I have it as an uh, educator. I think if you're a student, if anyone's watching as a student, you can sign up for uh, a Git. It's, it's a, a product from GitHub. Again, not a representative of it. I could be getting this wrong, but I know that my students at NYU can get access to Copilot for free. Um, usually I turn it off, to be perfectly honest with you, and especially if I'm live streaming, but you know, this is an AI assisted experiment today, so let's leave it on. Um, okay. Uh, yes, and uh, adding it to a, I, I'm not create, making a Git repository yet, but I'm going to. So the other thing to do with your .env file is to make sure to add it to your, uh, um, add it to Git ignore. So if you're going to post your code to GitHub, your env file doesn't go with it. That's why you're hiding it in that file. Also, if you're working on a Mac, you know, even more important than .env is just, just ignore these ds underscore store files. I think I might be to blame for them. Because DS, those are my initials. All right, so now let's go back to, just in case the uh, API key is visible, uh, let's just go to here for a second. It's not, okay, excuse me. Let's go back to here. Now, interestingly enough, uh, you can see this was me, uh, my library in here, I'm like testing out things with ShiftBot. So uh, I didn't intend to use this account, but that's what I, so let's look for the documentation, or even better, the getting started. 
Great, so let's look at this and see what I can find. Uh, it's telling me stuff. I want to look at Node.js. Whoops, not web, Node.js. Node.js, great. So we've got the API key. So the next thing we want to do is, is I could make, so the Gemini API, I can just make plain old HTTP requests to, and I could go down that route, but I think, why, I think it'll be a little faster and why not use the official uh, packages. So let's try installing the generative AI package. So I'm going to do npm install Google generative AI. Let's do that. Then I am going to, um, oh, I don't want to, I want to do an import. So let's see if, let's see how, let's see if Copilot will do something magical for me. Um, I think I can do like this, like uh, rewrite this using ES uh, modules. I mean, I think I could have done this myself. Yay, okay, so it's going to, uh, yeah, I want to accept it. Great, so now I've imported the Google Generative AI package uh, into my node code. And um, what I can do is I can create an instance of it um, with my API key, and I called it, does anybody remember what I called it? Gemini API key. I could look in the .env file, but then I would show my API key. I'm going to just look in the .env file really quickly. Gemini underscore API key. The thing is, honestly, I think Copilot went and looked in my file because Copilot suggested uh, the right thing. Oh, shoot. I showed it, didn't I? <laughs> I showed the API key. Uh... Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. API key shown. So I will reset that API key. Do I bother with that right now? Uh, uh, thanks, moderators, for helping out in the chat. I can see there's a little bit of chaos going on there, and I really appreciate those who are able to be here today. And uh, hello, uh, and uh, hello to Creus Digital Studio from Greece. <laughs> Copied and used too late. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's fine. You, it's fine. I'm going to delete it later. I, I know I have some friends at Google. I'll ask them if I get I run into issues with my account. <clears throat> stars, they're just like us. <laughs> they show I mean, I'm not a star. I just, that, but probably nobody knows that reference. That's like an old People magazine reference. <laughs> okay, uh, back to... <laughs> Back to here. All right. So let's uh, let's let's just take a look and grab this code and see if this works. So what's going on here is I am loading the model Gemini Pro. There's I forget what they're called. There's Gemini Lite or just plain Gemini. I can't remember what it's called. There's Gemini Pro. There's Gemini Ultra. So Gemini Ultra is not available yet, but that is the larger. Uh, 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 model that I'm excited to try to see how it, um, uh, tell me, um, uh, tell me about why I love rainbows. And so then I have a prompt. I can send the prompt in, uh, through the generate content function. I can get the, uh, uh, response converted into text and log it. So let's just see if we get this to work. Let's run it. it you know, unless my API key already got shut down. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow, that is very verbose. Okay, so now I wanna hook this up to P5. Let's hook this up to P5. And so I'm gonna do that by really quickly spinning up a uh, Express server. <laughs> See how fast I can do this. So I need, uh, I wanna make a little server on my local server on my laptop that'll talk to the Gemini API and P5 will talk to it. And I, I, I could go and grab some of my example code that does this, but this is an interesting experiment to see. Okay, so import, uh, I don't know, Express. And then, uh, Make, make an express app. 
Okay. Uh, serve static files in a public public folder. Okay. Uh, start listening on port 3000. Great. Okay. Wow. Uh, and now, um, okay. So now let's um, make a, a folder called public. Um, let's uh, add in that folder uh, index.html file and a uh, sketch.js file. And uh, let's go to the P5 web editor. And I'm just going to copy paste and use exactly this. And I don't need the sound library, so we can remove that. Sketch.js, uh, P5 sketch that draws with mouse. <laughs> oh, Copilot. Shiftbot would have helped me by now. Oh, there we go. Let's add the draw function. By the way, the reason why typing is not going so well is because it's very cold in here. Okay, great. Uh, use the circle function, silly. Okay, so now let's run this server. Let's run now. Oh, okay. Ah, I've got to import. Well, first I have to, did I install Express? I don't, did I install Express? I can't remember. Uh, package.json. Yeah, I did. So what's wrong with my import? Import express. Well, let's let's look at some real solid documentation. Uh, let's look at the express website. Uh, getting started. Uh, and are you going to give me an ES? <laughs> Why are you telling me how to do it with require? Uh, what did I miss? I'm sure I'm sure someone in the chat is going to tell me uh, what I missed here. Import star as express from express. Can I do that? Remove curlies on import. Ah, okay, because it's actually the whole thing. Got it. Okay, there we go. All right, thank you to CJ. There we go, server is running. Actually, so I also want, um, this will help. I find it convenient to be able to uh, have the full uh, URL in, um, in the console because then I can just click on it. And let's, let's take out a run right now. And here we go. Okay, so I'm going to now click over here, and uh, we should see. Yeah, there we go. Now uh, it's a little, so the P5 sketch is now being hosted by this particular Node app, and it would be it might be nice to switch these around to make that a little bit more obvious. Uh, and so, okay, so great. So I have a P5 sketch running, and it's hosted. Drawing the so now what I need to do is I need to create an API a route on my node server that can receive a message from P5. So I am going to, in node, uh, I need to create a route called, uh, let's call it Gemini, uh, that is a post. Okay, great. So, um, and I might need to like, do, there's some like middleware thing I need to import. Import, use a body parser to parse JSON. <laughs> I think that'll work. So I think I need to add that also. <laughs> so what am I doing? I'm creating an express server to host my P5 sketch. That's what this is doing. I want my P5 sketch to be able to send JSON over to the express server so it could send that JSON over to Gemini. Okay, 
So, uh, and let's, I don't, does this get in there twice or what's happening here? This should be up here. Um, and then now I don't want this run function, what I want. And we can create, we can load the model like just once, I think. I don't think I should be loading it every time. I don't really know. Uh, and then so now this should happen here. But the prompt, the prompt should come from the post, and then I should send back, uh, I should say response. So I prefer to say, use request and response. So basically this is a route, whenever I call slash Gemini from my P5 sketch, I am going to try to get whatever the prompt comes in from P5. And then, uh, wait, I don't need the model. What is that? Okay, I don't need that. That is some extra nonsense. Then I just going to ask the model for the result, get the text back, and then say response, JSON, and send the text back as a JSON object. What am I missing here? And then this is not, this is no more. Okay. Okay. So I should now, what, what's wrong? There's an error in my code. Oh, uh, this is the end of this function, semicolon. Okay, great. So this is the route that I'm going to call from P5. So let's go to the P5 sketch and just in setup right now, I am going to call, I could just use fetch. Let's use, uh, let's just use fetch. So um, P5 has a function called HTTP post. So I could use HTTP post in P5 to make that post request to the server, but I'm guessing that some of you watching this, if you want to try to build your own version of this, you might not be using P5, in which case you would probably want to use the JavaScript fetch function. And do you know who happens to have a video about how to program with fetch in JavaScript? That's right, me. <laughs> but I'm just going to do it quickly now. I'm going to say, uh, I'm just going to do a test here. And I'm going to say let response equals uh, fetch slash Gemini. I'm getting a Discord message. Is it something important? I don't know. Um, I'm getting, uh, um, I'm going to mute my laptop. Uh, fetch from Gemini. And then what do I have to send it? <laughs> I've, I've, I've kind of already forgotten. Yes. Oh, good. Thank you for helping me. <laughs> oh, look. It, prompt, a circle, a prompt. So let's say... Uh, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna use a variable called prompt. So I'm gonna say let prompt equals, uh, up. well, it's funny, it, sorry, it's not an image generation model, uh, copilot, uh, a story about a cat with a hat on. And then I'm going to say data equals response.json, console log data.text. So now uh, let's rerun the server and I could use nodemon, which will re, I'm gonna, oh, what's wrong here? Response has already been declared in my node code line 29. Uh, oh, what? <laughs> ah, <laughs> uh, model response. Okay, let's just, whoops. Ah, my hands are so cold. <laughs> Okay, I'm almost there, by the way. So now, so the server's running. I'm gonna go check out it, check it out. And okay, I have an error. In, uh, line 14, JSON could not be called as a function. Oh, oh, I've forgotten something really, really critical. I'm so sorry, I'm sure the chat is telling me about this. Oh wait, yes. Okay, so I have forgotten, because I was kind of rushing along here, not thinking about it, that fetch, returns a promise. Did you want to learn about promises? I also have some videos about that. <laughs> I'm gonna just pull the muscle there. So uh, I could use dot then, and there's lots of different ways to handle promises. My preferred way is to use a await and async. And just so there's a little less confusion here, I'm going to move this into another function. And I'm gonna call this function an async, async function test Gemini. 
So, see, Copilot like often just gets in the way for me. Um, and this async. Uh, and then I'm going to call, I could await this function, but I'm just going to call test Gemini here. Okay, I don't think I need to rerun the server because I only changed the client side code. Um, let's make this a little bit bigger so you can see it and let's refresh. Okay. Uh, oh, and but right, I forgot that I made the function async, but I need to say await here. And then I also need to say await here because these are the two asynchronous functions. The data comes back asynchronously. I need to wait for it to finish. And then I don't never really understood why converting it into JSON um, requires an await, but it does. Uh, and let's refresh again. All right, so I think this is working. I'm getting a missing style.css, but that doesn't matter. We just have to wait here. Okay, great. And we got our, great, so it console logged the story. Amazing. Very verbose, Gemini, but here's where things are going to get a little bit interesting. Now, if I go back to the Gemini docs, quick start, I'm curious to try the conversation, the multi-turn conversation. I think this might get a little bit, uh, I'm already like 10 minutes over where I said I want it to be. <laughs> so I might just, I think I'm going to fake, okay. So an, an interesting next step here, which I'm not going to do today, but I will kind of move in that direction, is to use this multi-turn conversation. So instead of just giving a single prompt, in my P5 sketch, I could track in an array a history of a conversation, and I could even create a fictional conversation that the model thinks happened when it starts to give me values, which is how by the way, ShiftBot kind of works because ShiftBot has all this prompt engineering and it, uh, uh, which are basically like a precursor conversation with the model before the user starts to engage. Yeah, I'm kind of oversimplifying and hand waving it, but that, uh, uh, you know, uh, but that's essentially how it works. So, but I can even just with the simpler uh, generate content function. I can actually do that in here. So I think this could be great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I'm going to make uh, a variable called instructions. And I'm going to say, um, you are a frog who says ribbit. You only ever say ribbit. You never say anything else. Only ribbit. It doesn't matter what you are asked, you ribbit. Okay, so this I am going to put in front of, so let's do this. Let's put a space. Do I have, this is a little bit, so, um, so let's, let's just say, uh, uh, and I'm going to say, um, yeah, this is exactly, I don't know what, what weird variable name this is, but, but uh, Copilot seemed to know exactly what I wanted to do, which is put this in here. Okay, so the prompt is going to come in from P5, and this, you know, secretly behind the scenes is going to be, um, is going to be prepended uh, to whatever the user says. So let's go back to the P5 sketch. And um, let's make this work a little bit better. Forget about test Gemini. I'm going to say request Gemini. And I am going to pass in a prompt as opposed to having a hard-coded one. Then I am going to uh, return data.text. So, and um, let's forget about the draw loop. I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep the, uh, I, I kind of want just in a playful way to use the canvas still. So let's use the canvas still with background zero. And I am going to say, let but sure, uh, reply, I'll make a button. But before I make the button, I want to make a text input, which is going to be a create input, uh, enter a prompt. I, 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 it's, it's, uh, just fill it with hi. So I haven't rerun the server yet. Where, where am I here? But 
Uh, okay, let's, so that I don't get that error, let's stop referencing a non-existent style sheet. Uh, let's rerun the server. Okay, so right down here, what I want is whatever I enter in here, and I, reply doesn't really make sense, but I'm going to click reply, and the reply should be, uh, I'm going to draw it into the canvas. So again, I'm not trying to make an elegantly designed chatbot. I'm just kind of going for it. Uh, appending the instructions, is it wrong? I'm pretty sure, I'll, I'll double check that. Uh, oh yeah, thank you. I want the instructions to be first and the prompt to be second. I did not notice that. Thank you to uh, Rubix in the chat who uh, pointed that out. So let's fix that. And let's rerun the server. Okay. And now what I need to do is I'm going back to my P5 sketch. So when the button is pressed, I'm gonna, wow, it's really helping me out here. I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna make, make some friendlier code. I'm gonna say um, run Gemini. This is a little bit ridiculous how I'm writing all these extra functions but I'm just trying to make this uh, async function run. I'm trying to make this as friendly looking as possible. And I'm going to say, uh, let result equal await uh, request Gemini. Oh, see, this copilot, I, I, like, this is what I mean. Like, it's so helpful, but it, sometimes it's too much. Uh, text input, I want to use text input dot value. So this is me. I mean, this is a little bit silly, but I'm trying to just make the code as verbose and clear as possible. You could obviously write this in a more elegant, streamlined way, but, and text input would have to be a global variable for this to work. So let's make that happen. So essentially, when the sketch starts, I create the input field, I create the button. You could certainly do this in the HTML file, you could style it with CSS, I'm just doing this in the quick and dirty P5 way. The button, when it's pressed, calls run Gemini. What run Gemini does is call request Gemini with the input, with the whatever is typed into the text input box, gets that result, uh, and then it puts it into a variable, and I'll call this uh, reply. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say text align. I'm just going to have some fun with it to draw it in the canvas. Center, center, text reply. Uh, width divided by two, height divided by two, uh, width height. Like I, mean, I think I can give it a text box so it'll do any text wrapping. And then uh, I should say, uh, let me redraw the background. And, you know, I could put a... Um, a thinking animation or something, but, um, and then say fill 255, no stroke, but let's just see if this even works. Am I missing anything? I think I've got it. Uh, let's do text size 32. Should probably be green to be a frog. And then I can make this a little bit bigger. Um, I'm, I'm now I'm just like obsessing over things that don't matter. Okay. Can you help me with my code? Is it happening? Okay. Failed to fetch. Ugh. All right, we're going to get this. We're going to get this working. What, what, did I get an error on the server? Okay, good. Uh, Text not, oh, response was blocked due to safety. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't laugh. Okay, negligible low, harassment probability was high. So good work, everybody should be safe. I mean, I think being a frog isn't that dangerous. <laughs> uh, let's go, but um, frog, okay, you are a cat who says meow. You only ever say meow, only meow. I mean, the question is, was the, was the, is, are my instructions the issue or whatever I wrote into, I have no idea, but let's change that and see 
Uh, so obviously I could handle that error a bit more elegantly, but, uh, and I'm just gonna say hi. Oh, why did it go down in the bottom? It worked, but it went down in the bottom right. So my drawing is off by text align. Oh, because I put width divided by two, height divided by two, I guess. And I, because I use the box. So if I do this, then, this, this is obviously the really important part. And then I'm also going to do this. Okay, let's try this again. Hey! Uh, what is your name? Oh, I'm never going to know if I got a new reply. It's just going to say meow. <laughs> uh, who are you? I'm using a very, very, uh, the, the, like this incredible like piece of technology. I mean, maybe, maybe incredible isn't the right word to use here, but I'm using this very sophisticated piece of technology. It was probably trained on gigabytes of data all around the internet for it to only reply meow. Guess what? I don't think I need the Gemini model for this. <laughs> okay, let's, uh, let's change the prompt a little bit. Uh, uh, let's try uh, in the server. You are a choo-choo train. Choo-choo train who loves rainbows. Okay. It's trying to give me, what does Copilot want me to put in there? I'm not, I'm not, not, not falling for it, Copilot. All right, here's my last little uh, attempt here. I, and I can just go refresh now. Whoops. Hi. Oh, okay. Well, so I need to fix this. Um, so let's say loves rainbows. You you respond with only with a maximum of ten words. Okay, let's try that. Yay! Okay, the cat emoji is still there. Um, what is your favorite kind of rainbow? Double rainbow with a pot of gold. All right. So, uh, <laughs> ta da! Wait, I didn't hear that. Oh, yeah. Did that play? Yes. Okay. Whew. All right, so um, I'm, uh, this has been a long stream. I'm a little bit uh, tired now, quite hungry. I, uh, went, I'm about 20 minutes over time from where I intended to be. But you can see how this is just, so if I, if I go back to where we all started today, um, which is uh, the ShiftBot project, and if I refer back to you back uh, to this read, uh, this uh, article about how ShiftBot was made. What I'm essentially showing you is um, just this very first, if we look at this, uh, yeah, let's look at this image. Can I get this bigger? Great. So there are, um, there are multiple steps happening behind the scenes in ShiftBot. Persona instructions, few shot examples, P5 specific instructions, semantic retrieval of content, of context, content for context, as well as other contexts on the page. What I have just built is a little inkling of just that first step. I'm using the Gemini model, Gemini Pro, out of the box as is, but pre-pending a little bit of information around creating a persona, a style. The next thing that I could do if I were gonna be here longer, and I'm happy to come back and build more of this kind of stuff if people are interested. Next, for my class next fall, I intend to make more proper tutorials about this kind of thing. Um, I'm really also interested in uh, models where that I can train them and uh, from, uh, from scratch essentially with only my own data, maybe models that can run on device that don't require uh, going out to the cloud and using 
you know, a, a, a model that, you know, I don't have a lot of agency or ownership over. Um, right now, I, you know, I'm using Gemini it's not for free right now. I, I'm pretty sure it's available for free. I, I imagine there's different contexts and that things will change. Uh, you know, the GPT API, uh, it's basically, you, it costs money per request. Um, you know, there's huge energy impact to a lot of these models. So there's a lot of things to think about uh, when working with this particular technology. But so I'm. But but uh, uh, what I would like to do is keep going with this if you're interested. So uh, right now, adding the few shot examples, if I wanted to go with these next two steps, would be as simple in many ways of elaborating here. Uh, I I forgot what the context is uh, limits for Gemini Pro. Something like thirty-two thousand uh, tokens. A token is you could think of it kind of like a word or a syllable, but it's actually something very specific to the model. Um, um, but you know, there's a maximum amount of text, but you could put lots more things in the instructions. And then what I would really excited to investigate that I haven't had time to really dig into on my own is how I could do the semantic retrieval of content. So um, maybe you know, I have a, a, a library of document of essays that I've written about my love of trains, <laughs> and I could have, I could do a lookup in that library of documents that I've written to find different parts of text that are relevant to a user's prompt, pair those with the, with the reply uh, in a way that would customize uh, and provide hopefully either like, whether it's reliability or just some kind of like personality weird quirky experiment you're trying would add a lot of things. So, so, um, so I, uh, I, I will um, post this code for people to use. I'm also gonna wipe my API key uh, immediately after I turn the stream off. So if you, I hope you enjoyed using my API key for these few minutes, you'll have to get your own. Um, but it might take me a bit to get to that. So come back later today. Uh, if you're looking for the code, I'll hopefully have it added to this video's description. You can try to hit me up on social media. The hack is, <laughs> send me a message on TikTok, I'll reply to you. <laughs> but, uh, um, uh, but hopefully I'll, I'll, I'll uh, you know, if you're watching this in the future, hopefully there'll be links in the video's description to where you can find the code that I've written today um, yourself. All right, um, uh, fun. I'm gonna answer a few questions as I put on this uh, goodbye song. I'm gonna make sure it's not too loud. When the song ends, I say goodbye. Um, fun with Aryan asks, where can I get your schedule for streams? Kirish Tofu asks, have you done cosine similarity? I think in the last, I think in my last stream where I talked about embeddings and use transfers.js, I did use, uh, Mark Boot says chocolate. Uh, Mark Boot, uh, I did use um, cosine similarity. Okay. Uh, oh yes, and thanks Mark Boots is shouting out. So funny, I asked for a live stream schedule. So. Uh, if you're looking for somebody who streams reliably on a schedule, uh, there's many people who do this, but uh, Coding Garden is in the chat and as a stream that I love to follow, uh, apparently happening later today, uh, try day Friday. Computational Mama, I don't know if Computational Mama is streaming these days. Uh, check out Computational Mama's work, hello. And um, I, I mentioned uh, Rafael de Corville, who also streams on Twitch. I am not a reliable streamer. I, um, my goal for this year, right now and I, I'm keeping to it is every week I spend, I do like one coding train thing. I, I teach at NYU, I have a full-time job. So basically one day per week, I'm kind of dedicating to the coding train. I do more of the coding train on other days too, but just in terms of making videos. So uh, in an ideal world, I think the pattern might be streaming every other week, recording videos every other week. So two streams per month, two new videos per month, that's, I mean, that might actually be way too ambitious. So one stream per month, I don't know. But uh, if you join the Discord, code, the codingtrain.com slash Discord, uh, and, and we're actually gonna be revamping the Discord this year, you can get a notification role, and I will post, uh, post to that role in advance of any scheduled stream. You know, certainly YouTube has, if you subscribe to the channel and click the bell thing or whatever, you should get notifications when I schedule a stream. But yeah, that's your, those are your best bets. Uh, thank you for the kind comments. A uh, competition, Mama, no more streaming, but that's okay. Um, oh God, Gabriel is asking me, how's the Oregon Trail project coming? Not very well. We need to work on that. I haven't done a single thing on it. 
Uh, Mark, thank you, uh, Rodak. Uh, uh, thank you, Coding Garden, for posting the Twitch stream. Uh, uh, yeah, there's. I don't have a bot. <laughs> I'm so pathetic. So your 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 star your your uh your I'm gonna just move over here because I can put it into the chat myself. The Discord link. Oh, my song's ending. Um. Oh, goodbye, everybody. <laughs> See you next time. I will put the Discord link in the chat as soon as I uh, turn this off. <laughs> See you hopefully in a couple weeks if I can get it together to stream every two weeks. Sign up for the Discord if you want to get a notification or just like maybe you accidentally wandered into the live stream. That's wonderful too. Thanks for watching. Um, and I appreciate all of you. Uh, uh, oh, I have a button to press. Okay, goodbye. This dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this, this dot, this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do you this dot, this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, fun, this dot, this dot, this dot, never forget this dot. I'm gonna do the this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, the this dot song. Never forget the this dot. <laughs> Somebody compose that song for me. So this is random, this is noise, Perlin noise that is, in the core random algorithm, the actual random algorithm itself, those numbers aren't related at all. You pick, like, I'm picking random numbers between zero and 10. Nine, two, seven, six, one, nine, four, eight, nine, two, one, three. I pick nine a lot, apparently. But with Perlin noise, I might pick numbers like this. Two, three, four, three, four, five, six, five, four, five, six, seven, five, six, seven, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight, seven, six. Look, this is like Perlin noise performance art. Nine, two, seven, six, one, nine, four, eight, nine, two, one, three. I think nine, one, two, three, four, three, four, five, six, five, four. Look, this is like Perlin noise performance art. Noise, I might pick numbers like this. Two, three, four, three, four, five, six, five, four, five, six, seven, five, six, seven, five. Perlin noise, that is. Perlin noise. So this is Perlin noise, that is. Perlin noise. This is this is Perlin noise, that is. Perlin noise. So this is Perlin noise, that is. Perl Perlin noise. Perl Perlin noise, that is. Perlin noise. So this is Perlin noise, that is. Perlin noise. This is this is Perlin noise, that is. Perlin noise. So this is Perlin noise, that is. Perl Perlin noise. Perl Perlin noise, that is. Perlin noise. So this is Perlin noise, that is. Perlin noise. This is Perlin noise. But with Perlin noise, I might pick numbers like this. Two, three, four, three, four, five, six, five.